Barakat to Yahweh, Barakat to Yahweh Shai, all praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honors be unto our apostles and elders at Great Millstone who taught us the truth and who rule well, peace, and love, salutations, and mercy be unto the hopeful elect, Yuakim and Fiyakwatim, that believe in Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai with their whole heart, mind, body, and spirit. And who are waiting for these last and final prophecies to happen in the earth in the return of our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. You Israelites, you know, that are contentious, you know, that are unbelieving, you know, who believe in the Old Testament only, you know, who thinks that, you know, uh, justi justification, you know, or righteousness, you know, comes through the law by itself you know you are deceived and ultimately you know it's the most High heavenly father that has deceived you you know when you go into the book of second thessalonians you know um the second chapter in verse 11 it says and for this cause yahweh shall send them strong delusions that they shall believe a lie that they all might be them who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. We're justified, you know, through our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. You know, when you go into the book of our Romans, the ninth chapter, and beginning at verse 29, and as Isaiah said, except Yahweh of, of, of Yahweh, or the Lord of Sabbath oath, had left off a seed, we had been as Sodom, and been like unto Gomorrah, you know, because that seed are going to all believe in Yahweh Shai, all right? And uh, that seed is the remnant, the elect. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles which follow not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith, you know, because ultimately that's what it's all about. You know, it's about having faith in Yahweh Shai. You know, Yahweh Shai helped to establish a grace period for us. You know, us being within this flesh, having these stony hearts. You know, um, uh, the scripture says this, that we uh, drinketh up iniquity like water. Yeah, the book of Job uh, 15 and 16. How much more abominable and filthy is man which drinketh iniquity like water? You know, so we sin constantly. And it's because we're in these bodies, you know, with these hearts. And you sin even when you don't know that you're sinning. So you can't keep the law uh, uh, perfectly. You know, the scriptures say, if you be uh, uh, circumcised, that you're debited to do the whole law. Galatians 5 and 3 for I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debitor to the whole law. There's another scripture that's in the book of Galatians as well. It says in the law is not a faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. You know, so if you break one law, all right, then you're guilty of them all. That's also a scripture in the New Testament, which is um, in the book of James 2 and 10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. So it's impossible for us to keep the laws 100%. So therefore, we needed Yahweh Shai, all right, who, who gave us liberty. And that liberty is in the liberty to do wickedness. You know, that liberty isn't a liberty, you know, to do whatever you want, all right, according to this world, you know, but it's just a grace period, you know, that, that um, holds us over until the time when these, when we're redeemed and these bodies are changed and the new covenant is fully established. The book of Galatians the fifth chapter and 
beginning beginning I, I really want to read the whole chapter but I'll begin at verse 6 for Yahweh shy all right neither for in Yahweh shy neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision but faith all right which worketh by love and not all Israelites have faith all right the only ones that have faith are the elect they were given that gift of faith, according to what it says in the book of Ephesians 2 and 8. For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is a gift of the Heavenly Father. And every Israelite isn't given that gift. All right, Every Israelite can't believe in Yahweh. Every Israelite can't see the truth. And I'm speaking of the truth. All right, yeah, you have Israelites that some of them know that they're Israelites. They know even the name of Yahweh. But they don't believe on the only begotten son. All right, because that's a stumbling block unto them. Galatians, the fifth chapter, verse seven. Ye did run well. All right, who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that call of you. A little leaven, leaven of the whole lump. Yeah, a little wickedness, you know, leaven of the whole lump. You know, it makes the whole lump wicked. All right, if you got the truth and there's and, the, and there's uh, uh some truth and there's lies in there you don't have the, the the truth all right because it's leaven yeah you can know that you're an israelite but if you don't have the the the, the hundred percent truth you're not in the truth read it on it says i have confidence in you through yahweh shai that ye will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. All right, you have all of these Israelites that call themselves, you know, being woke or having the truth, which are coming with all of these bugged out heresies, all right, these bugged out doctrines, all right, some teaching a different Yahawashai, some teaching a different name. All right, and not calling him Yahweh Shai, you know, others not believing in the Messiah at all and not teaching the, 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 the truth, but teaching that we're only supposed to be in the Old Testament. All right, if you're in the, only in the Old Testament, then that means that that you have to keep the, the law 100 percent. And if you if you break one law, you're guilty of them all. And if you have broken a law, how can you atone? If you have no temple, all right, if you have no altar, if you have no priest, all right, to offer upon that offer, altar. And you can't go into the Most High Heavenly Father yourself directly. There was always a go-between. All right, you had Moses, then you had Aaron, all right, in the in the in the priest. But there's a change within the priesthood. All right, we have a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And that a high priest who is Yahweh Shai have also made us kings and priests. So reading on Galatians 5 and 11, And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross cease. I would, they were even cut off, that trouble you. For brethren, Ye have been called unto liberty, only use not the liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. So although you're calling to Yahweh and you're within a grace period, you can't use that grace period to live how you want to. You can't just sin, you know, and the, and the scripture says that. Bear with me, Baba Kasha. The book of our Romans 6 and 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Yahweh forbid. So you don't just go around committing adultery. You don't just go around eating pork, shrimp, lobster, all right, crab, slurping it down, all right, with extra butter, all right, simply because. You're not un un under the, the law, which means that you're not justified by the law. All right, but you're justified through faith. 
So just because you're not justified by the law doesn't mean that you just completely not keep the law. We're going to keep the law 100% within the kingdom. We're going to have to keep the law such as commandments. All right, the laws are not done away with, but you're not justified by them. All right, because you can't keep them 100%. You need a savior. So right now we're under grace going back to Galatians 5 for all the law is fulfilled in one word even this that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself but if you bite and devour one another take heed that you be not consumed one of another all right this I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not f fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary one to another so that ye cannot do the thing that ye would. But if ye be led by of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, seditions, and heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long sufferingness, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So, although righteousness doesn't come by the law, that doesn't mean that you just can't. Uh, uh, have any order alright you still have to have order alright you still have to keep the law to the best of your ability but when you come short of the law you have your Yahawashai alright but your Yahawashai has become a stumbling block for a lot of you Israelites that's the reason why the scriptures say this going to the book of Romans the ninth chapter and uh, uh, going to verse 31 but Israel which follow after the law of righteousness have not attained the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at this, that stumbling block. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling block, a rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. All right. And what does it mean to be ashamed? The word there in the Greek is Strong's G 2617 Katais Huno. One who is said to be put to shame, who suffers a repulse, of whom some hope has deceived. So you're not going to be deceived or you're not going to abandon. All right, the faith of Yahweh Shai. All right, but you're going to stand firm in this faith. And, and as I was reading that, the, the, the image of Stephen, you know, came into my mind. You know, how he suffered the way that he suffered. But he said, you know, be, when, when he was being stoned, behold, he saw the heavens open and he saw Yahweh Shai sitting on the right hand side of the heavenly father. All right, and he gave testimony of that as he was being killed. So he didn't abandon his faith, which you will have a lot of Israelites that do. They'll apostatize. And some simply just because you have individuals that, you know, uh, 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 persuade them not to believe, all right, convincing them that, you know, we, we follow the Old Testament only, that the New Testament isn't true, are right, deceiving them because their hearts are simple. But ultimately, if they're able to be deceived, it's because they didn't have the faith anyway. All right, but the ones that are coming up against this truth, they can't see it. And the reason they can't see it is because Yahweh has chosen their delusions and he didn't allow them to believe in his son. Now, this is the, uh, the book of John, the sixth chapter, verse 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which see of the Son 
and believing for him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up in the last day. Now jumping down to verse 44, no man can come to me except the Father, which have sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. All right, it is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of Yahweh, every uh, man, therefore, that have heard and have learned of the Father cometh unto me. All right, which Yahweh Bashmi Awashai has already chosen them to be a part of the elect, has already chosen them to be believers. And the only thing they have to hear is the, the, the apostles, the prophets, and the teachers teaching. And once they hear this word being taught in the name of Yahweh Shai, they're going to wake from that slumber. They're going to wake from that sleep. All right, they're going to wake up. And when they wake up, there's nothing that you can do to take that truth away from them. Reading on verse 46. Not that any man have seen the father, save he which is of, of the father, you know, of Yahweh, uh, he have seen the father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me have everlasting life. And that's the reason why when Yahweh finally does come, you're going to mourn. All right, because you have spent your life a campaign of trying to destroy the very same thing that brings you salvation. All right, you have been trying to destroy the gospel of Yahweh, destroy this truth, and to hinder and stop the prophets who are testifying in the name of Yahweh. So, unbelieving and contentious Israelites, that's what this video is about. When Yahweh comes, you're going to mourn. Go into the book of Matthew. All right, the um, 24th chapter and beginning at the 30th verse, it says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and, the, uh, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now, when you go into the word for tribes, all right, because who is it that's going to be mourning? You know, these Israelites that were against Yahweh Shah. All right, which are the same spirits that were back then that are reincarnated in this time that are in the same spirit, which is to be against Yahweh Shah. The word for tribes is fule. In the New Testament, all the tribes, all the persons descending from one of the 12 sons of the patriarch Jacob. So Fule is going to Israelites. So you Israelites are going to be mourning. All right, you're against Yahweh Shai. You don't believe in his truth and you're trying to destroy this truth, which is the only thing that can help bring you salvation. So being against Yahweh Shai, when he comes, you're going to mourn now. Let's grab the word for mourn as well. The word there is kapto. And it says to, to uh, uh, cut, strike, smite, to cut from, cut off, to beat one's breast for grief. It's about to be a time of evil, destruction, calamity. All right, very terrible times that we're in. All right, in the day of the Lord. And there's going to be a lot of judgment going out. And you're going to seek to be saved from that time when Yahweh Shai appeared, but you ain't. All right, Yahweh Shai himself is going to get rid of a lot of you. Hey, the scripture says, he that refused that I should reign over them, bring them hither before me and slay them before me. Revelation 1 and 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him and all the kindreds of the earth shall well because of him even so aman so once again the word there for kindred is fule and what does fule mean again in the new testament the persons descending from one of the 12 sons of the patriarch jacob so you're going to have israelites mourning because they're not looking for yahweh to reign over 
They don't even believe in a, in in a, in a, in a savior, a Messiah, although the prophets all right, prophesied concerning him. Although the very same uh, 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 book that they're trying to hold and lay claim to as being the only part of the Bible that you need. All right. When it says in the book of Psalms, for law, come the volume of the book. It is written of me. All right. Which is dealing with the old and the New Testament. All right. They're not looking for a Messiah and they're trying to destroy everything that represents him. And persuade others to do so. All right. All of you Israelites that are against Yahweh by Shemiah shine against his truth. And who despise and come up against the men <coughs> that are preaching his word. All right. You're going to weep and wail. Hey, the scriptures say within the book of um, Romans 2 and 5. But after the hardness and impotent heart treasures and up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of Yahweh. So you ain't doing nothing but treasuring up unto yourself wrath against the day of wrath. All right, which Yahweh is going to send Yahweh Shai. And, and what does the scripture follow? What does it say? Who will render to every man according to his deeds to them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and and honor and immortality and ever, ever, uh, eternal life, but to them that are contentious, all right, and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. So to you that are contentious, all right, what's coming for you is wrath, the wrath of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. All right, don't be surprised when, when, when you scoffers and scorners, all right, just start dropping. All right, the spirit leaving you. Now, the word for contentious is erythria or erythia. <coughs> erythia, Salaki, if I'm mispronouncing it. But it says, apparently, in the New Testament, according distinguished distinction, a desire to put oneself forward, a partisan and, and fractitious spirit which does not disdain low arts, a self-seeking pursuit of political office by unfair means. Now, when you read partisan, you know, what may come to mind is like a, a, a bipartisan, you know, which uh, the word bipartisan means uh, twofold, you know, or the word bias simply means twofold. So when you think of like a, um, a bipartisan, you think of like an agreement between two forms of, of, of or two parts of the government. It may be between the Democrats and the Republicans, you know, which they uh, um, agree on a particular, you know, a, a law or a particular um, budget. You know, they have a bipartisan agreement, you know, to be a partisan is the opposite of that. You know, to be a partisan is a, is a member you know, of a group, you know, that's formed to, to fight secretly against an occupying force. And that's what, what you do as Israelites. All right. You come up against the very same thing that is meant for your salvation. And that's the reason why the scripture says this. When you go within the book of Second Peter's Salakia, that's uh, First Peter's actually. The second chapter and beginning at verse six, wherefore it is contained in the scriptures. Behold, I lay in Zion, the chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded unto you. Therefore, which believeth, he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builder disannul, the same is made the head of the corner and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense even to them which stumble at the word being disobedient, wherein to also they were appointed. Because not only are they disobedient, they were appointed to be non-believers. They were appointed to be the non-elect. Just as the elect was appointed to be the elect, they were appointed to not believe, all right, and to come up against this truth. The word, therefore, appointed is titheme, 
And it says, set forth something to be explained by discourse, you know, or to establish, to ordain. Rather, that's, that's a better way of defining it. They were ordained. Now, I also want to look up the, the word stumbling and the word offense. The word stumbling is proskome, proskome, a stumbling block, an obstacle in the way, which if one strikes his foot against, he shall stumble or fall. That which a soul stumbles, an example by which is caused to sin. So they're, they're stumbling at Yahweh Shai being the Messiah, all right, and coming to be the, the savior of the nation of Israel. Uh, uh, offense is scandalon, and it says a a um, a movable stick or trigger or trap, a trap stick, a trap snare, any impediment placed in the way and causing one to stumble or fall. Stumbling block, occasion of stumbling. An example: a rock, which is is a cause of stumbling. Applied to Yahawashai whose person and career were so contrary to the expectation of the Jews concerning the Messiah that they rejected him and by their obstinacy made shipwreck of, of their salvation. So you're stumbling at the idea of Yahweh, which is costing you your salvation. All right, because you can't understand. It's not given to you to understand. It read... Uh, within the definition of uh, our Eritrea, it says partisan and fractitious. All right, to be fractitious is to be irritable and quarrelsome, and that's how these scoffers are. All right, coming up against you know this faith, but everything is 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 done for a reason, because when they come up, that inspire you, are right, to do lessons, to go against what they say which leads to the, the furthering of, uh, of the gospel and the edif edification of the elect, all right, on your behalf, because the spirit hops on you to defend the gospel of a group or organization difficult to control unruly. So you can't control these niggas, all right? There's nothing that you can do, all right, to, to uh, uh, get them out of that spirit. The only thing that can get them in their right mind is death. And that's the reason why Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is starting to take their asses out. All right, so don't be surprised, you know, if you're a scarf and scorner, if you just give up the ghost. All right, reading further within the definition of Arethia, uh, uh, Paul exhorts the church to be one in the mind of Yahweh Shai, not putting self forward or being selfish. All right, uh, speaks against having uh, selfishness or self-promoting in your heart because it's not about trying to promote yourself and that's what most of them are trying to do they're trying to promote themselves so they're trying to uh, um get glory they're trying to get fame all right but but what's coming is is romans 2 and 9 tribulation and anguish upon every soul of the man that do of evil of the Jew first, those that know that they're Israelites, and also of the Jew, uh, the Gentiles, those that don't know that they're Israelites. All right, because you have both forms that come up against the truth. Those that know that they're Israelites and those that don't know that they're Israelites. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that work of good, to those that know that they are, and to the Gentiles, you know, those that don't know. Now, the book of James 3 and 14. But if ye have bitter envyings and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. All right. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earth, earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. All right. For, you know, everyone that you confuse and you steer them away from the truth. All right, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to, uh, even though they'll get destroyed too, because it's not meant for them to believe, all right, he's going to bring their blood up upon you. Now, I wanted to go into 
the book of Hebrews, you know, which I'll, I'll just cut the lesson here, you know, because we're already at 30 minutes and I'll come back, you know, and do, you know, a uh, part two to this, you know, with the remaining scriptures that I have left. You know, so with that, I truly hope that this lesson has been edifying all praises, honor, and glory. Being to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh a double honors to our apostles and elders at Great Millstone who taught us the truth and who rule well, a Shalom and a Ba'at Babal.